In May of this year, there were 35 billion views on TikTok regarding quiet luxury. This tells us something that is no surprise in our arena because this is specifically the subject we've been talking about for about 12 or 13 years on Parisian Gentlemen, the blog, and also uh, since the inception of Sartorial Talks. So today we're going to talk not only about quiet luxury, but mainly about the old money aesthetic. Some of you may feel like it's the same subject, but really there's a lot of differences. And if you want to understand the old money aesthetic, it's very complicated if you just look at it as a whole and try to grasp the individual components. But if you break it down into four different sections, you're going to grasp quite easily what the old money aesthetic is. In 2013, I wrote an article on discretion, and the whole article was on the subject of not only how old money people dress, but also about their attitudes, um, their just way of being. And I think if you look back at that article, you're going to get a good sense of just the essence of an old money personality. So let's launch into the old money aesthetic. First, I'm going to tell you a story. It's about Anderson Cooper, who is a seventh, seventh generation Vanderbilt. He received a box of clothing for his son and he was very happy to receive it because it was from a very nice source and he was anticipating a lot of nice clothes. And so he opened the box and he immediately paused and he said, uh, I, I don't think I can use these clothes, they're too bougie. Now bougie is a term that's reflecting the bourgeois, which is the upper middle class. And he basically said, these clothes are not something I'm going to let my son wear because there's too many labels on them. And I will never let my son wear labels. He said, I'm more of a normcore guy. Okay, normcore. And I looked at his images online and normcore is reflected in just basic essentials. No fuss items, plain t-shirts, plain trousers really basic leather shoes. This is the Anderson Cooper aesthetic, which is literally a seventh generation old money person. So it's a great example because there's not a lot of people that you can look at that's seventh generation. So it's very nice to have Anderson Cooper as um, an example. All right, let's go and talk about the four areas in old money. First is normcore. We just spoke about that. Basic essentials, not a trend. Let's jump into some things you can get that are considered essentials for the normcore aesthetics. First, we'll go into shirts, and I'm going to interject some old money examples. For example, the Vanderbilts, um, the Royals, the Kennedys, um, the Rockefellers, during this talk of the four areas of old money. So let's start with normcore essentials. In shirts, we have the button-down Oxford. Basic colors, no fuss, straightforward Oxford shirts. Secondly, we have t-shirts, all in solid colors. You choose maybe brown, white, blue, red, solid color t-shirts. Then you want to get overshirts. Overshirts are very useful with this aesthetic because you literally just put them over the t-shirt and go. Um, polo shirts. Very basic blue, white polo shirt. Next, we'll get blue stripe. Probably the only pattern in the norm core aesthetic is the blue stripe or another color stripe. So get a few cotton shirts with a stripe. Finally, there are a few more shirts that you want to look into. The plaid shirt, which not my favorite. I find it very American um, and not that being American in a bad sense, but just more like a careless American type of look. But if you get a nice plaid shirt that appeals to you, add it in for the look. Lastly, our jumpers. Basic pullover merino wool sweaters that's easy to wear, not a lot of bells and whistles, just straightforward sweaters. In the area of trousers, very simple. You want to get some khakis, maybe some basic tan khakis, olive, um, white just the simple um, khaki spectrum. Next, you want to get good jeans, two or three pairs, no distressed look, nothing that's going to be considered in the style arena, just nondescript pair, two, two or three pairs of jeans. 
for women. You can get a maxi skirt. If you know what that is, it's just a longer skirt that approaches the ankles. That's a button down that is made of cotton. The next area will be sports coat. The main sport coat is so simple. You just get a blue sport coat and a tan sport coat. It's going to go with all your other essentials. It's going to be very easy to put on and, and go out. And why would you do this? Why would you get these essentials? Mainly, you would do it to wear around the house. You would do it to run an errand. You would do it to go visit a neighbor. Just the simple task of everyday life is going to be very applicable for the norm core aesthetic. Last, let's add some cotton socks, basic colors, and then let's throw in some outerwear, which will include a quilted jacket, very basic quilted jacket, which is going to last for years and go with everything. Quarter zip pullover, which basically zips here, and you just pull over for a very casual look. Um, utility jacket, and even a windbreaker. That's about 20 items that you can buy for your norm core look that you're going to go to maybe the majority of the time if you don't have a lot of formal reasons to go out and dress up. But uh, it's a great aesthetic to have. It's very nondescript. When someone sees you, they're not going to say, oh, that's an upper class person. Oh, that's an old money person. Because it's really nondescript, non-defining, but very good in the area of quality. So finally, where to shop? Well, based on some of the old money people that I know and also some of the research that I've done online, there are at least five solid places where you can shop. One is Land's Inn, a very older company that many of you may know, um, very norm core. L.L. Bean, same kind of vibe, but also um, easy to find a lot of these things that we just talked about. Um, G.H. Bass for some basic loafers. And then two that I'm not sure if you've heard of or not, Bill's Khakis, which is sort of a really fundamental place. A lot of people like to go to get their basic khaki pants. And last of all, Peter Miller, which is very streamlined norm core items. You'll have to take a look and to see what I mean. The second area of the old money aesthetic is the prep ivy look. Preparatory meaning a prep school, which you can think of any type of university or prep school. And, and maybe that type of aesthetic you might wear if you're going to Martha's Vineyard, or you're going on a beach vacation, or you're going somewhere where you want to look ivy, but maybe a little bit more playful. Now, the ivy look is going to be more uh, a tribute to the halls of Princeton and Yale and Harvard, a little more strict, but also very clean aesthetic, but relaxed. Let's jump into the essentials that you might want to get if you're going to incorporate the prep ivy look into your wardrobe. First thing, polos. We said polos before with Normcore, but this time go, maybe go for the Lacoste or the Ralph Lauren label. Very discreet, very acceptable. Secondly is the rugby shirt. You'll see a lot of rugby shirts in the prep <laughs> and Hugo's very happy because he's a rug rugby fanatic. But you'll see a lot of rugby shirts in the prep Ivy look. Um, a good place to look for those is Hackett and Crew. Next, cable sweaters. Um, very definitive for that ivy prep look. You want to get a variety of colors, make sure it's a good quality. Um, Oxford shirts again, maybe you want to up the quality a little bit. When we say button down Oxfords, we mean button down here and also sometimes button down on the collars as well. The button down collar was actually made for um, polo riders and the idea was to button the collar down so when the sport of po polo was being played, the color wouldn't fly up into the face. So eventually became a style element. It's a little bit cue to why we would wear the button-down collar on the Oxford shirt. Cornerstone, of course, is the blue blazer. So when you get a blue blazer, make sure that you have metal buttons on the blazers. Very indicative of that being called a blazer and not just a sports coat. So have metal buttons. Can, they could can be gold, they could be silver, they could be pewter. Lorenzo Cifanelli likes to put mother of pearl shiny buttons on the blazer. Make sure they're shiny. That is what defines blazer is its buttons and also sometimes a patch, which is the reason a blazer is called a blazer because the patch that's sometimes included there is um, indicative of emblazoned. So make sure you get the blazer components right. It's going to be your go-to item. And if you want to get fancy with Ivy Prep, you can go for a bottle green blazer and also a red blazer. So those are the three, your navy, which everybody knows, bottle green, and red. 
Next essential, which I'm not sure if you're going to be comfortable with or not, but it's the Varsity Jacket. Now, you can get a Varsity Jacket in a nice quality wool with not a lot of bells and whistles that talk about which school you're going to or which school you like. It can be very nondescript. Um, you can look at Wallace and Barnes for examples of different Varsity Jackets if you want to add that to bring in that strong prep ivy element. So the next essential is the Chino which in the US, they're called khakis. We're just calling them cotton pants in a variety of colors. Let's go not only with beige and olive, but let's try a little gray and white. And also, you can really knock yourself out with a chino. And Tom Wolf was the first person that I saw comment on this decades ago. You can get what's called the go to hell pants. Okay, Tom Wolf coined this term, and I'm going to read you a little bit of background because no one seems to really understand how that happened. In Tom's article, he actually visited the Hamptons in Martha's Vineyard, and he wrote a report on these very spectacular pants that he was witnessing. Tom says, Bostonians on Martha's Vineyard had their own tribal colors. The jackets were mostly navy blazers and the ties were mostly striped ties or ties with a little jacquard emblem on them. But the pants had a go to hell air, checks and plaids of the loudest possible sort, madra plaids, yellow on orange, window pane checks, crazy quilt plaids, giant hound's tooth checks, or else they were a solid airmail red or taxi yellow, or some other implausible go-to-hell color. They finished that off with loafers and white crew socks, or no socks at all. The pants were their note of Haitian abandon. At the same time, the jackets and ties showed they had not forgotten for a moment where the power came from. All right, well, that's a tribute to the strong aesthetic of loud pants, and this is a wink to the old money aesthetic as well. You should give it a try. The next essential is the seersucker tailoring. Seersucker is a very special summer fabric, very breathable with a creping, um, finishing, and something that definitely is old money aesthetic. It really speaks to the South, maybe um, mint juleps on the sunset, a very mm, Southern type way of life, but something that's adopted worldwide for that old money aesthetic. You can get it in several different colors. Hugo doesn't especially like the red and white. He feels like it's an um, ice cream seller look, but uh, maybe you want to stick with the nice soft blue and white seersucker suit. You can wear it separately, the jacket by itself, the trousers by itself, or of course as a set. Next, don't forget the loafers. The loafers are going to be your essential shoe, easy to slip on, slip off. This applies to both men and women. If you want to go for a really good solid loafer, I would go for the J.M. Weston 180 loafer. Very iconic shoe and well-known, established, something that you can't go wrong with. But if you want to do something more basic, you can get a G.H. Bass or, or a, a very simple loafer, but the good, solid, quality loafer is going to last you decades and it will be something that will be your go-to shoe for that old money aesthetic. Finally, to conclude the Ivy Prep style, let's look at the last element and that's accessories. Non-negotiable, you have to have the regimental tie. Be careful when you wear a regimental tie because you don't want to offend any society or institution, so get more the generic a regimental tie to really carry off that old money look in the Ivy prep segment. Two more accessories I'll mention. One is the striped cotton belt. Um, I'll show you a few pictures of this. It's an aesthetic I noticed when studying the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers. Seem to really like that to encompass the Ivy um, style. And also the braided leather belt, very common fundamental item to complete the accessories. So that gives you some ideas of some essentials that you can get for the Ivy Prep look and give it a go. I really don't think that you're going to struggle much once you have the primary items. You can mix and match and just enjoy the look. So you have Normcore, you have Ivy Prep. Third area is quiet luxury. 
If you're quiet luxury already, remember, you're not necessarily incorporating old money aesthetic. That's a part of the old money aesthetic. That's our third area that we're looking at. That's what we talk about on this channel, on Parisian Gentlemen, and that is a focus on craftsmanship. The, the quiet luxury aesthetic is basically buying the best quality at a decent value, incorporating craftsmanship and everything you wear. And listen to it. It's quiet luxury. Okay, we're talking about calming looks. We're talking about beiges and browns and blacks and whites. Occasionally a punchy color, but nothing to disrupt that calming quiet luxury feeling. So let's talk about some essentials that you want to get to accomplish that quiet luxury look. Again, you know, I keep saying blue blazer. It's very funny, but that blue blazer is in every single area of the old money aesthetic. So again, I'm going to re- surface the blue blazer and really talk about how that's going to be something that you can revolve all your other items around. You want to maybe up the level a little bit, make sure it's crafted in a good way by a reputable crafter or tailor or ready to wear maker. I'll throw out a few names out there for the guys, Kiton, um, Adelini, um, your own personal tailor, made to measure. This happens to be Walker Slater. If you're just starting out, you can use, take a look at Walker Slater. This is my attempt at wearing a quiet luxury um, outfit. So I'm, use, I'm wearing silk and linen. I'm wearing a calming color. It's a three piece. It's very good quality um, raw materials and it's made to measure, which it means it's made for me. The next area is the linen suit, which I just described, something that you want to look into because everybody needs a summer suit, and don't wait in your wardrobe to get a summer suit. Biggest mistake, because if you're wearing a four-season suit and you're sweating and uncomfortable, that is not quiet luxury, so make sure you get that summer suit. Start with the linen. If you want something more pliable, try linen silk. The next area is the summer shirt and the three season shirt. I'm going to give you the best of the best shirt if you really want to go quiet luxury. Okay, if you get a shirt, look at the fabric Carlo Riva. It's a very exclusive fabric. It's made in Italy. It's on a slow loom. It's light and feathery when you wear it. It's porous. It's all cotton. You really have to experience it to understand it. Get a summer shirt made in Carlo Riva fabric, and that will be probably the ultimate of the quiet luxury summer shirt. The next shirt that you want to get, if you really want to stay into that old money, quiet luxury aesthetic, is a Charvet shirt. Charvet is based in Paris, is probably the most fundamental, well-recognized name in the existence of shirts in the world. So get the Charvet shirt. You can choose literally from a thousand different fabrics. I have a bespoke Charvet shirt. It was a thousand euros at the time. I don't know how much it is now, but the idea is to get the highest level shirt you can that you can wear over and over again that's going to have durability, sustainability, and is going to have the strongest aesthetic possible. The fourth essential for the quiet luxury aesthetic is the tweed suit. I can't say enough about a tweed suit. In fact, uh, probably my tweed suit, was, which was made from Rapunzel in Rome, is in the winter something that I will wear once a week, either as a total suit or just the jacket with a different pair of trousers or blue jeans or maybe just the trousers with the pullover. A tweed suit is indispensable. You can look at Walker Slater for a beginning tweed suit, um, and then you can advance up as you learn more about the quiet luxury um, craftsman that you want to choose. Don't neglect the tweed suit. You have to have one. I use Italian tweed fabric only because I feel like it's more that quiet luxury feeling. It's more tactile, agreeable. Um, the English fabrics are beautiful in tweed, but they can be kind of scratchy from time to time. And the idea here is to be at ease in the quiet luxury. Next, you want to get cashmere sweater. 
Um, a cashmere sweater is something that everyone loves. The only problem is you have to be really careful with cashmere because moths love to eat it. So you need to store it in a bag with maybe some type of um, cedar spray inside because you want to protect that cashmere. Very fine, expensive, tactile, agreeable fabric, and it just reeks quiet luxury. Get it in different colors, your, any of your favorite colors, hopefully soothing to give off that calming aesthetic. Finally, you want to get five pa pairs of trousers you like. Flowing, easy to wear, not tight. You choose your style, get at least five pairs to go with your other items in your wardrobe. Now let's talk about shoes. Shoes, again, get something in good quality leather. You can't go wrong with John Lobb. You can't go wrong with Edward Green and a host of other shoes that we talk about on the channel. We'll put a few links up for you to look at different types of shoes that you may consider, all of which are appropriate for the quiet luxury aesthetic. So we have three more areas to talk about. Let's talk about scarves for your primary aesthetic. Make sure you get a solid silk scarf, solid wool scarf, Really the finest materials and the most beautiful patterns. Again, thinking of that calming, putting others at ease vibe. So don't neglect your scarves. Have at least five to mix and match with the other elements of your wardrobe. Next, let's talk about the formal, for example, the tuxedo. And this is, of course, an element of quiet luxury because you're going to need a nice, um, Formal, and normally we say formal is white tie, so semi-formal is going to be your tuxedo. Every man needs a beautiful tuxedo. Even women can have a lovely white tuxedo, and I'm going to put up a picture of one I really like. So make sure you have that covered for all your formal or semi-formal events. Buy the best tux you can afford because you're going to be using it for years and years to follow, and you don't want to compromise on quality if you want to embrace this aesthetic. And finally, just to throw in a few more pieces, like get a nice outerwear um, jacket, for example, Barber, which is um, a waxed cotton, it's probably the top of the line for outerwear. Um, maybe some split toe shoes for when you're going out um, in, in any type of situation, it's an outdoor activity. So that wraps it up for the quiet luxury segment. Hopefully those are some essentials you can buy and really get you started to develop this aesthetic. Last of all, and most of you are going to think this is sacrilegious, but there is an element under the old money umbrella that is for branded clothes. We're not talking about wearing your big LVMH t-shirt or your um, Prada glasses with Prada plastered on the side. No, we're talking about the times you're going to be attending an event. It's okay to experience some nice branded high street haute couture items when you're going to an event. You'll see it with the Rockefellers and you'll see it with the Vanderbilts, the Kennedys, and even the royal family. Maybe going for that Vera Wing dress, maybe going for that Tom Ford suit happens from time to time. They're probably going to go more Adelini or Kitan, but perfectly fine to go with branded items when you're attending an event. Women will even go to extremes. Think about King Charles III's coronation. People were really dressed to the hilt. And women even aren't afraid to wear the glitzy diamonds either on the ears, on the necklace, or as a ring, usually not combining the earrings and the necklace and the ring, but maybe one signature piece you'll see in, in these types of events. So save the branded items for the events you attend, for example, fundraisers, or maybe a political event, um, attending a wedding reception, anything along those lines, it's okay to go for the branded item. So let's wrap it up. Do you remember the four areas that accomplish the old money aesthetic? Norm core, very basic essentials, nondescript. Um, the second is Ivy prep look. You'll see it a lot throughout the old money um, community. Third is quiet luxury. And finally, it's okay to throw in a few branded items. I hope that gives you a detailed concept of what it is to encompass the old money aesthetic. I would love to hear your comments. I'm sure I left something out, so interject it if you have that kind of background information that can add to the conversation. And for now, goodbye, and we'll see you next time on the next edition of Sartorial Talks. Mm -hmm.